Thank you very much for having us here. It's a pleasure. Um, now, we are here to talk about this building, but first we are going to show you this very special place. Uh, this was the year of 2007. We were four young architects uh, trying to uh, succeed in architecture, and we were doing as much as competitions that we could. And uh, after a series of uh, three competitions, we saw this one for the headquarters of the Cape, Cape Fair uh, Natural Park. Um, and um, the problem here is that we only had one day to do it. Uh, so even though we tried to do we, we did it because it, it was in a very special place. So this was the competition. We only had one, one night to do it. Uh, and this is <laughs> the result. Fortunately, the program was a very simple one. We only had a, a, a small museum and uh, some, a couple of offices. Uh, and surprisingly, after all these competitions, and the one that we won was the one that we devoted last time. So, we are heading to Cape Verde. Uh, Cape Verde is uh, an ancient uh, Portuguese uh, uh, colonial uh, country. Um, and it's very easy for us because it's uh, only three hours flight and uh, they speak Portuguese. So it's an archipelago of uh, nine islands. Uh, the one uh, at south in red is uh, Fogo Island. Fogo Island is uh, a stratovolcano. That means that uh, it's a volcano itself. It's a cone-shaped volcano. And uh, what we saw here, what we see here is uh, the crater and uh, a big peak uh, on the on the east coast, uh, and it has a th uh, three thousand meters high, almost three thousand meters high. So this is the shape of the island. It's uh, there's a population of uh, fifty five thousand people. They live mainly uh, at the base of uh, this uh, volcano, volcano, uh, except with the, the exception of uh, a small population that uh, live. In the, in the crater of the volcano. So they live quite isolated. OK, so this is very easy to, to go through this island. They, they have lots of roads, uh, rocky roads, so you, you cannot drive fast, but it's easy to, to, achieve, to, to go anywhere here, any population. The first night, day and night, we spend in uh, Saint Philippe. Uh, it's a very uh, beautiful, small town. Portuguese colonial style. And finally, on the second day, uh, we were heading to the, to the crater, to the site, the building site. So we took a three, four hours drive just to get in the feeling of the, the island. And finally, almost at the top, we can see some lava. And here, uh, here uh, this was the main entrance of the natural park. When, uh, when we uh, could see the peak, the volcano peak, the big one. This is not the volcano, this is only the peak. The island is the whole, volca the whole volcano. And uh, now this, uh, this slide is, <laughs> it, this is a, a book of uh, Jules Verne, The Journey to the Center of the Earth. And um, this is the story of a scientist that believed that he could uh, reach the center of the Earth uh, by a, a, a peak uh, on, the, on a stratovolcano. And the uh, funny thing here is that uh, the name of uh, this scientist, German scientist, uh, was Otto, the name of our, so this was meant to be. Okay, so this is the, cr the crater of the volcano, Xandas Caldeiras. It's quite big and uh, you, when you are inside, you have uh, on the north, uh, west and uh, south, you have this big wall, it's called Bordeira, uh, with uh, one kilometer high. And uh, on the east side, you have uh, the, the big peak. Uh, the population that lives here, it's uh, 1,200 uh, 1, people. And they live mainly from agriculture. They plant uh, uh, grapes to make a very nice wine. So this is uh, the entrance in Xandas Caldeiras. This is uh, when we really felt what uh, this was, uh, the power of uh, nothing and the power of uh, the, the nature. And uh, this road is the only thing that makes us believe that someone is there because it's uh, completely silent. Uh, this road is like a bridge over the lava. So we drove uh, through 
uh, 10, 15 minutes. And this, uh, we are now facing uh, west, southwest. Um, and this is the plantations that you can see here. They are small plants, but very good. A little bit further, you can see the, the population. It's very small. And here, inside the population, now this is one of the main, one of the main roads, um, you can see that the buildings are very poor and made by a uh, cement block. And uh, the main, the main uh, here they don't have any electricity or water, so they capture the, the, the rain and they, and, uh, they live with uh, daylight. Some, some people have uh, generated, but most of them know. So, okay, so now we arrive to the site, the building site, and when we were, we arrived, we saw this uh, uh, that it was full of these holes. That uh, at the time we don't didn't knew what it was, but uh, this is the way they plant uh, plant things to preserve the humidity. And um, one guy jumps and uh, starts screaming with us and saying that we could not build here because this uh, was his land and his way of living, so we could not build here. Um, this is, these are all uh, government terrain uh, properties, but um, these people live here for uh, almost, almost uh, uh, yeah, three centuries, so they are very protective. They survive uh, the eruptions, all the, the eruptions. They, don't move, they didn't move. They just uh, took these the things off and stayed there, so they are very protective. And this was the moment when um, all the project changed because uh, we understood that um, what we have made um, was not uh, uh, good enough, so we have, uh, this was the key factor to change and make, and, and make a, peop uh, a building for the, from the people, with the people, for the people. So, uh, as Andrea was saying, uh, the main goal uh, of this building when we won the competition was only to fix uh, scientists to study the volcano and the biology of species inside the natural park. So after our first visit and with local authorities, we understand that the, the, this uh, population uh, uh, was really, really important and part of this place for a lot of centuries, and they must be involved in the, in the process. Um, so uh, we, we talk together and we understand that there was a lack of uh, um, social and uh, cultural equipment. And so we saw that as an opportunity and uh, talk with the sponsors in order to add to the original design a program uh, with some cultural and uh, uh, social equipment. So they were really excited with that. The sponsor was the German corporation. And so uh, we have the OK to, to go on. So we went back to Portugal to start the design from zero. Uh, so here you can see we add to the program um, a, a coffee, a, co a coffee shop that uh, allows uh, social interaction and also uh, external auditorium, an uh, internal auditorium and an exhibition center. You can see here that uh, the building was divided mainly into uh, parts. On the left, you have the um, uh, laboratories and all the, the original program that was to fix the scientists. Uh, and on the right side, you have the, the public spaces, uh, like the, the external auditorium, the coffee shop, and the exhibition center. There's another auditorium, but you don't see here. Here you have the ground floor plan. The building was uh, designed in an order that all the interior spaces can be closed and the building has an open, open uh, uh, plan where everybody can go in. You have no uh, gates or fences or nothing. Everybody can go in and enjoy the building because all the uh, interior spaces were closed. So after the design and this uh, part of the, of the program, we have to, to understand what kind of material we are going to use. So our first idea was to use uh, volcanic stone uh, because all major buildings in uh, Fogo are made with volcanic stone. But in our trip there, they told us there were for, there, it's forbidden to build in that stone. But because this is a special building, we, were, we have a, a special authorization. But for us, that seemed a bit awkward because we were doing a, a, a building for the people in that place and it wasn't sustainable. So 
we thought in which way we can use the, the material they used to, to build. This is some houses in the uh, Xandas Caldeiras. They use this uh, uh, masonry cement block that they use in all Africa because it's really easy to make. Uh, so we start thinking that we are, we're going to use this, this um, uh, block, but this material, but how can we improve it? So we had the idea to mix the, the, to the cement some ashes, the volcano, to make a color more look like the surroundings. And after several testings with the Cecil, it's a Portuguese company for uh, concrete, uh, we then end up with this solution. Here, they are still drying, so it's not the final result. But um, it was what uh, <laughs> the solution that we chose. After that, we have uh, a, a bigger uh, challenge to solve. It's because, as Andreas said before, we, we, in Xandas Caldera, there, there are any uh, electricity or water uh, grid. So it's completely off-grid. So for us, uh, as a young architects, we thought it's going to be easy for energy because we're just going to use solar panels. But for solar, solar panels, uh, because it's a public building, uh, it has a lot of equipment and usage. So, and because in um, in Cape Fear, in Xandas Caldeiras, there are uh, a big thermal thermal amplitude between uh, day and night, almost from zero degrees to thirty degrees. The building must have some kind of uh, natural ventilation and heating system. So, we develop a system of integrated grids that allow for a passive control of the building, and at the same time use the in internal inertia. To, that allows heat accumulation, and we develop a, a guide for people to use the, the grid in order to open them in, in the night and let the, 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 the heat uh, go. So the building is powered by photovoltaic, photovoltaic roof panels that absorb the energy and um, uh, are delivered during uh, the night and uh, covering the needs for the base LID system. So after that, we have another <laughs> problem that was water. Because we are in a volcano, we can drill. Because if, you're gonna, if you drill, we're going to find lava. And that's not going to be good for the project. So uh, we develop a system with our engineers of, uh, well, we see our farmers there. They are amateur. They collect water from the rain. They, they, they create like little uh, pads in the slopes of the volcano, of the crater, in order to collect the water and store it in tanks. So we copy that. We, uh, water from the rain is collected, then it's stored in tanks and used for irrigation in the bathrooms. Then gray waters uh, are, uh, are collected in, a, in another tank and they are uh, um, recycled and put it back in the system. And for human usage, there is another tank that is filled by the fire department in order to be for human usage. Now we're going to show you some pictures of the building and try to explain why you have this design. So this is the opening with all people from Xandas Caldeiras using the, the building. So, oh, okay. so the, the feeling in, Ch in Xandas Caldeiras is overwhelming. Uh, you almost feel crushed by this uh, amazing uh, uh, and powerful landscape. And our idea is to design a building that surrounds people and kind of uh, protects you from this magnitude of the Pico do Fogo and the Bordeira. And because there's n almost nothing built there, no urban tissue, we designed the building as if it was uh, erupted from the, from the crater, like a crater inside the crater, creating a series of patios where people feel comfortable to enjoy the views of Bordeira that you can see there. It's 1,000 meters high and the Pico do Fogo. As you can see here are the laboratories. Wait, it's not going. Oh, OK, here the main patio. The, all this area is open for everybody. It's not closed. It's completely open. This is the exhibition center, the interior of the laboratories and meeting rooms for the scientists. This is the internal auditorium, laboratories. This is all, a completely open area for everybody. Inside, you can see the coffee house, the patio, the external auditorium. All the, the green roof was covered with ashes from the volcano. And we, we try to copy the way they, they plant, doing these little holes to put the, the, the plants. So I must warn you, that here you can see the crater inside with Pico do Fogo and Bordeira goes around. Uh, <laughs> but now I have to warn you, this is not a very happy ending story, because uh, 
uh, in November 23, 2014, there was a really big eruption in Fogo. Uh, it went for 40 uh, 45 days straight. And you can see here the satellite image of the crater going uh, erupt. And we did. All the population of Santa Calderas was destroyed completely. So unfortunately, we did also the building. And this is the rest of it. <laughs> so thank you very much for having us. And <laughs> ready for some questions. <laughs>